Hey guys, we got Bobcat here, and my dad is making a lot of noise right now, so I apologize that in advance. But today I've got a bunch of magic cards laid out here. I've got two Return to Ravnica booster packs, two Gatecrash booster packs, two Dragon's Maze, one Theros, one Born of Gods, and two of the most recent one, Journey to Nyx, which just came out last week now. And you see that clock right there? It is one o'clock, just after one actually. But we're going to go through all of these, and we're going to see what's inside of them. See if I get any good cards, and hopefully I'll film my reaction so that you can see how exciting this stuff really is. Opening booster packs is like opening presents, and I love opening booster packs, so I decided, well, why don't I make a reaction video of it? So we're going to start with the oldest to most recent, so we're going to start with my Return to Ravnica cards, and I know which cards I'm sort of looking for, so let's see what we've got here. All right, so the first one that we've got is Defiant Glee, which isn't anything special. It's a Rakdos card. I like Rakdos. I have this card actually. I don't use it. Um, just 2 1 trample. Nothing too special. That's a common. Meh. So I'm not interested in this one, so I'm just going to put it to the side. Next one we've got is Armory Guard, and it has Vigilance as long as you control a gate, so it's one of those kind of gate cards. The Demir Agents watched from the shadows. Eight hours, and I've yet to see him blink. Nefara hissed. I suggest we find another way in. I like Demir quotes, by the way, so when it says Demir, I figured, hey, why not? Anyway. Alright, so the next card we got is Urban Burgeoning, I guessing is how it's pronounced. Untap this line during each other player's untap step. Good for control, but I don't have it. It's not interested. Grizzly Salvage. Reveal the top five cards of your library, you may put a creature or land card from among them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. I've always been interested in Gruul, but I've yet to make a deck on Gruul, so we'll just pass on that. Nothing interesting. Frostburn Weird. And yeah, this is a hybrid card. It's okay. Don't really use blue red that much. I do have Ralseric though, I'll say that. But I don't use blue red, so let it pass. Machino Rocketeer, another common that I do have. I'm not interested in what it says because if I don't have it in a deck, what's the point in reading it? Cremate, same thing. Um, yeah, nothing, com no comments to say. And I'm probably not going to have much to say when we, as we go through the commons unless there's one that I'm really looking forward to. That I'm really looking forward to. And I'm probably not going to really care about much of the commons until I get to the uncommons and rares and hopefully a mythic rare. Selesnia Sentry. An elephant. Too much mana to use, in my opinion, to regenerate him. You'd have to have a really strong mana deck to want to use this. It's not worth it. Here, ooh, a card that I haven't seen before. This is downsized. Target creature you don't control gets negative four, negative zero until end of turn, and has an overload of three, a regular cost of one. That's not bad. But again, don't really use it cards. Let it pass. Explosive impact. Oh, that looks like an interesting card. It's like a guy's getting his flesh burnt off his bones. He deals five damage to target creature or player for six. Kind of reminds me of Lava Axe a little bit, I think. I'm not too sure if it does the same thing. It might. I don't remember. Uh, now we're going to move from common to uncommon. The Is It Key Rune. I don't have one of these, but let's see what it does. None of the key rune, just so that I'm aware of, from what I've known, key runes aren't that great. But it's interesting what they can do. This one turns into a 2-1 blue and red elemental artifact creature. Blue and red, so it's a hybrid. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. Oh, okay, so I see where that one's going. Not interested. Bazar Crovod. I think it's pretty big. Whenever it attacks, another target attacking creature gets 0-2 until end of turn and untap it. Nivix Guild Mage, my friend's mascot, because he has a deck box and deck sleeves that have the Nivix Guild Mage on it, and that's his fun deck. Very fun with that deck. I've played it several times. It's annoying, by the way. That's what Control does. But it's a Guild Mage. I don't really need it. Let it pass. Ah, yes. And so now we get on to our rare, Cryptborn Horror. And I think I'm actually looking for one of these in my most recent Black Red Creature deck which is mostly Rakdos. 
So the Cryptborn Horror has a trample and it enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it, where X is a total life lost by your opponents this turn. Helpful in a burn, but you sort of have to wait until you you have to sort of wait until you cast a powerful spell, and then you need to make sure that you have three mana left over to summon this. Actually, no, I am interested in that one. In my creature deck. And then we've got a centaur token and a swamp land. All right, not bad. Not bad at all. We got we got at least one card that I was looking for, so that's good. Um, and now for the next pack. This one is represented by Is It, the uh, leader, or Niv Mizzet, the leader of the Is It guild. The last one was some sort of guild mage from, I believe, Azorius guild. Anyway, so let's see what we got here. We've got a Bellos Lizard, which pretty much has an ability that gives it fire breathing. Nothing too special. Let it pass. Armory God again. Guard. Guard. Armory God would be awesome. I don't even think that's a real card, is it? No. Uh, Aerial Predation. Aerial Predation. Destroy target creature with flying and gain two life. Uh, yeah, most of the Return to Rav I'm probably not interested in. I'm starting to regret buying Return to Rav cards, but that's okay. Mizium Skin. I almost said Mortars, but it's Mizium Skin. Nothing interesting. Golgari Long... Golgari or Golgari? I call it Golgari, personally. Golgari Long Legs. Nothing special, just a Golgari card. But I am interested in Golgari, I will say that, if I hadn't already mentioned. Search Warrant. Target player reveals his or her hand. You gain life equal to the number of cards in that player's hand. So it's a reveal and gain life. But it's Azorius. I have no interest in Azorius. So next card, we've got Splatter Thug, one of my favorite Return to Rav cards. Somebody said that it kind of reminded them of a horror creature of some sort, but I don't know. I don't know who I see in this one, but I like Rakdos-based uh, creatures, uh, and I use some of these in my Rakdos creature deck, so that's decent. I don't think I need another one, but I will put it in my interested pile. Selesnia so Guildgate, probably the card that I have the most of that I do not need. That's a lie, actually. No. I've got... All I know is that I've... My point is, I've got a lot of Selesnia Guildgates right now, and I only can use four in a deck, so... Not interested. Grim Roustabout. Another card that I have in my Rakdos creature deck, and another card that I know I don't need. Towering Indrik. 2-4 with Reach. What is that thing, anyway? Looks like it looks like a long necked zebra almost. Maybe like a hybrid between a zebra and a giraffe. I don't know. Anyway. Ooh, pretty. Aku Akus Steed? Akus K A Q U U S. Somebody help me pronounce this. Akus Steed. Oh, and now we're getting into the uncommons. Um and for three mana top, target creature gets 2-0 until end of turn. Okay, so it's one of those debuff cards. Again, not interested. Hellhole Flare. Yes, this is another card that I have in my Rakdos deck. I don't remember if I'm going to be keeping it or not, but I have only one of these. I'm putting in my interested pile. Brush Strider. 3-1 Vigilance. Not that I'll be alive to use the Vigilance, of course, because it's only a 3-1. So I'll just pop it over to the side. I love getting Shocklands, and I just got one. This is Overgrown Tomb, and this is the Shockland, as they call it, because you can have it enter the battlefield untapped, untapped for the cost of two life. I don't use Golgari, but I know somebody who does, so this will make a good trade for him. I don't know how much Shocklands are going for right now, but I know they're going for quite a bit, so I'm going to put that in my trade pile. Goblin Token. Just a goblin token and a forest. Forest. I gotta say, one thing about the um, the return to Ravlands, I actually really like the artwork of that because it's got buildings involved in that. And one of my one of the mountains is probably my favorite land artwork that I've seen. And I think that the only other better land artwork that I've seen is the Zendikar block. And I didn't play in that one. I only just started last summer when M14 came out. Now we're going to be moving on from Return to Rav to Gate Crash. And we're going to start by opening the Sunholm Guild Mage. 
from the Boros. And what a way to kick it off. We've got the Hands of Binding. It's shit. In my opinion, at least. I mean, there's probably a way that you can make a deck with this card, but I have one, I have two, and I have a shiny of this card. I don't use it, I don't need it, let it pass. Then we've got Green Side Watcher, Untap Target Gate. There are better cards that you could probably use for that. Devour Flesh. This is an interesting card. You need to know when to use it. And I have a shiny of this card, too. Uh, target player sacrifices a creature, then gains life equal to that creature's toughness. You could use it on yourself if you really need the life, I'll tell you that. It's situational, I think. My judgment. Uh, but I don't use it, so why bother talking about it? Tin Street Market. I've read about this one, and it's not for me. Primal Visitation. Enchanted Creature gets 3-3 and has haste. For 5 drop, yeah, that's probably why it's a common. Let it pass, it's Gruul, not interested in Gruul. Wojek Alberters. Battalion for First Strike. Eh, that's not too bad. You know what? I should try putting in more Battalion cards into my Boros deck. Because I do have Wojek Alberters, but I don't have it put in. First Strike and Vigilance would be probably good for that. So I'm going to pop it to the side there. Clinging Anemones. Anemones? Anemone, am I right? <laughs> Finding Nemo reference, by the way. Um, yeah, it's just a 1-4 Defender Evolve. You get the idea. Probably good for my Simic deck, but I'm not going to. Furious Resistance. Target blocking creature gets 3-0 and gains First Strike until end of turn. Yeah, no. Forced Adaptation. This is a good card for either an enchantment deck or a counter gainer deck. Which I have both of. But I don't need any more Forced Adaptations because i got quite a few as it is. Millennial Gargoyle. Flying 2-2. Nothing special. I have one. Don't need it. Ah, yes. Demir Charm. I love the description of this one, too. Dangerous to recognize, deadly not to. As quoted by Lazav, the Demir Mastermind. I do not need Demir Charms. I thought I did, but it turns out I don't, so let it pass. Righteous Charge. Creatures you control get 2-2 two, two until end of turn. I'm surprised it's not an instant. Don't need it. Knight of Obligation. Vigilance and Extort. I have this card and I don't use it, so immediately... Well, what does it do? Vigilance and Extort. Yeah, don't need it. I, I have one. Don't need it. Ha! Another Consuming Aberration. But I think I already have my limit now, so I probably won't be needing him. I'm just going to pop it in that side anyway. And then we've got an Island and an Add card. Now we're going to open up another Gate Crash. To start off with Predator's Report. And I used to have a deck that I used this in, but I don't have it any longer. So, probably don't need it. But what does it do? You gain life equal to that creature's power plus its toughness. There are decks out there with green that probably have a lot of counters and good total with power and toughness combined. Did I word that right? Did that make sense to anybody? Anyway like my Simic deck, because it gets a lot of counters on its creatures, so I could use that in there, but I don't I don't think I need the life gain. I, I usually just pass it. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut up now. Scorchwalker. This is a this is a good blood rush card for any gruel users out there. Um I have one but I don't use it, so let it pass. Mortis Strider. That is a card that is actually currently in my Demir Mill deck. Uh, blue black. And it oh and that's my cell phone going off. Somebody's somebody actually cares about me. And um, just a final note on this card, I do have it in my Demir deck, but it's gonna be swapped out anyway, so I'll let it pass and whoa, I just lost all my cards while I tried to I didn't want to look at the next card because I wanted to go check my cell phone, but 
whatever. My life. Runation worm. That's a big worm and a big drop too. Not interested. Moving on. Boros Guild Kid. I don't know if I have four of my Boros deck yet. So I'm just gonna pop it to the side. And we'll see. Uh Sky Games. Yeah, that's Enchanted Land. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. That could be useful in any deck if you want to bypass. But I think there are better cards that you can use. Corpse Blockade. Good defender. Sacrifice. Gains death touch. Not bad. I recommend for a zombie deck if you can constantly spawn zombies. This deck could, this card could be useful for that deck. I don't have that deck, so I can't use it. Burst of Strength. One of my friends actually used this as a in, in an interesting way. You know the, um, what was it called? Um, it's a blue card. Um, claustrophobia. Um, tap target enchanted creature and that creature doesn't untap during its next untap step. My friend had that cast against him in one of our multiplayer matches and he used burst of strength so he was able to untap and attack with it but then it just wouldn't untap after that. So that's, that's helpful to use for that situation but a lot of times not. Prophetic Prism. I got quite a few of these. Uh, exchange mana. Eh, that's not bad. But I don't I don't see a purpose to it. There's every single card in Magic has a purpose. So you could probably build a deck almost anything. You could build a decks around those freaking oxes from M14, whatever they're called. Pillar Field Ox, which is probably in me and my friend Matt's opinion, the worst card in M14. But somebody could have made a deck around them. Who knows? And I think that's fun when it comes to making decks. It's just trying to see what works with what. Orzov Guildgate. This is another Guildgate that I'm wondering if I need for one of my decks, but I don't know if I have the four limit. Um, oh, four limit. Th that's, that's not necessarily true. I don't know if you can only have four Guildgates in a deck. Um, in relation to the only four cards at a time rule in most standard decks, except for Commander, which is one. But even though I wouldn't want to go more than four anyway. So I don't know if that's true. Call of the Nightwing. I was reading about this one, and it's actually kind of interesting, because it's got a cipher, and every time the cipher goes off, or when you cast this ability, you put a 1-1 one, one blueback horror creature token with flying onto the battlefield. But I couldn't find anything that could synergy with it, so I had to just say no. Let it pass. Rip scale Predator. Can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Meh. Don't need it. Boros Elite. When at least it and two when it it and at least two other creatures attack, it gets two two until end of turn. That's not bad. But I probably won't use it. Are we at the rare yet? Yes. It's the High Priest of Penance. And I used to use this in my black white deck until I finally got some decent, more decent cards, but if I'm going to make a exile deck or a, just a destruction deck, then I'll probably use this again. Other than that, I've got an island and just another add card. All right, now we're going to take a look at Dragon's Maze cards, and um, let's kick it off with Tajik, I think, the Bully of the Legion. I don't think he'd be in here. It'd be awesome if he was, though. Definitely could use some more Boros cards. God, this thing's Yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, God. There we go. Let's start off first with a card that I have never seen before. This is the Bane Alley Black Guard. Never seen him before. But there's a big description. Let's take a look. I'm in the field of procurement, and business is good. The guilds want all kinds of maps and relics these days, though what they want them for, I'm not quite sure. So he's some sort of merchant, like a black marketeer, I don't know. Uh, not interested in him, he's just a 1-3, not that great. Demir Cluestone. I didn't expect to see this until the end of the comments, but that's okay. Demir Cluestone, I have one, don't need one, that. Nah. Just a mana and then tap, play two, sacrifice it to draw a card. That's how clue stones work. Tithe Drinker. This is a card that I may actually be able to use 
in my life gain deck, but I think I already have a few. I don't know if I need it, but I will put it in the pile either way. Has the snare squad. Whenever it attacks, pay one white. If you do tap target creature and opponent's minimum. That's actually not that bad, but for one attack power, it's not worth it. Maze Behemoth. This would be good in like a multi-color deck that I'm trying to make. I haven't gotten enough cards for multi for a multi-color deck, but I would love to make a Dragon Maze deck. Maze's End. Maze's End. With all the guild gates and all that. But Maze Behemoth I don't think is going to get me there. Morgue Burst. I have several of these. I think I have five copies of this card. And I know what it does. Not that big a deal. Don't need to explain it. Let him in. He's on the list. Ulrich, Rakdos club owner. Never heard of him. Punish the enemy. Yeah. Yeah, common. You know, I get, like I said before, not interested in commons, but I'll take a look at them. Thrashing Moss Dog. Scavenge 6 and Reach. Yeah, I don't really need him. I, I, I think I knew right when I looked at it, just like this one. Fatal Fumes, negative 4, negative 2 until on a turn. Not interested in. Murmuring Phantasm. I'm regretting buying Dragon Maze right now. I was mainly in it for the uncommons and the rares. So let's get into the uncommons. And we've got Haunter of Night Vale. Haunter? You mean like the Pokemon Haunter? No. Um, creatures your opponents control get negative one, negative oh. The Demir employ the spirits of Ravnica's ancient, nameless, dead, guiding their malevolence towards selected victims. Awesome, but I don't need it. Um, not a bad drop, either. Bread for the Hunt. I have a couple of these in my Simic. Oh, is that what that is a picture of? Interesting. Yeah, because that's mutants. It's pretty much mutants. But Bread for the Hunt, I have a few of these in my Simic deck. Um, don't need as much as I need. I don't need this, long story short. Turn and Burn Hybrid. It's a fusion card. I have one. Don't need it. Rare? We've got a Gruel Rare called Zerta Ancient. I do not know what the price of a lot of these cards are. If I don't react to them... I don't know what they are and I don't know what they're worth, so if anybody knows the fact that this card is worth a lot, um, now would be the time to celebrate, but I don't know. Whenever a player taps land for mana, that player adds one mana of his or her mana pool to any type that land produced. So if you tap a guild gate that's like a gruel, say you tap a gruel guild gate, you tap it for green mana and you also get red mana for it. Or if you tap a forest, then you get another forest. In addition, I got a Demir Guild Gate, which is going in my Demir deck, and a bird token. Um, I can't remember this guy's name, but all I know is he's the Paragon of the Izzet League. League? Yeah. He's the Maze Runner for the Izzet League. The Paragon, is what he's known as. And let's start off with a Tithe Drinker. Awesome. Another Tithe Drinker. I doubt I will need another one, but I'd be willing to put it over anyway. Oh, by the way, no Shinies yet. I'm surprised. Smelt Ward Gatekeepers. Oh, yes, I know this card. Um, control. Don't need it right now. Steeple Rock. Flying 3-1 for Strike. You know what? 3-1 for Strike isn't bad, but since it's a common, I don't think I need him. I might use him in an Azorius deck, but I'm not interested in Azorius, so let it pass. Mending Touch, Regenerate Target Creature, good in any general. Uncovered Clues, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal up to two instant and or sorcery from among them. Put the reveal cards in your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Yeah, I don't want this card. I have a few of these. Ah, Selesnia Clue Stone. Um, yeah, not going to be using that. Clear Path, probably not going to be using that. Thrashing Moss Dog, we already talked about that. No need to go through it. Uh, Weapon Surge, I have one. I don't need one. Whatever. Zerta Druid, which is good for... Um, that was a weird accent. Zerta Druid. Zerta Druid, which is good for mana. Um, wow, lots of ghoul in here. Feral Animist. For three, it gets XO until in turn where X is its power. I'm going to boost its power up at some point to double it. it reminds me of... Uh, Xenagos, the god of rebels. I think he did something similar. 
Um, Woodlot Crawler, and this is a forest walk, which I think is can be blocked if uh, opponent controls a forest, and it's protection from green as well. Can't be blocked. Uh, I don't know how walk works. I know Intimidate is you can't block unless it's artifact or creature that serves a color with it, so I'm assuming Forest Walk is the other way around. So that's good for getting past green decks, but I'm not interested in it. The Warlord's Helix. Is that Aurelia? Aurelia? I don't think so. It could be. I actually have Aurelia, by the way. Awesome card. War Leader's Helix deals 4 damage to a target creature or player, and you gain 4 life. There is no time to remedy our enemy's ignorance. Blast it out of them. And that's quoted by Aurelia, the leader of the Boros Guild. Our rare, Advent of the Worm, which I believe I also have. Good trade. Don't need it. And let's finish off with an Izzet Guildgate, which I don't need. And a Rhino Token, 4-4 four, four, Trample. Alright, that wasn't too bad. I feel like I've rushed that one just a little bit, but I think I need to sort of uh, stay away from Dragon's Maze because I feel like there's more Dragon Maze that cards that I need, but every time I open up Dragon's Maze cards, it's like, no. So far, the only real good card that I got is one that I'm going to be trading, and that's Overgrown Tomb. Um, yeah, great. So hopefully I'm uh, expecting better luck for um, the next booster pack, which is the other deck that I'm not really expecting much out of, Theros. The last time I opened a Theros booster pack, I got Elspeth, the most expensive card in that block. At least it was at the time. Anyway, let's open it and see. I didn't want to see anything, and I didn't see anything. Cavalry Pegasus. Flying whenever it attacks each attacking human gains flying until in a turn. This was one of those cards that I thought I'd be interested in for um, Boros, but my Boros deck is soldiers, and they're not necessarily humans, so I don't need this guy anymore. Loathsome Cata... Catabulpus. Catabul... Catabulus? Catabulus? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. I've been trying to figure out how this pronunciation since I fought that boss in Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. Must be blocked this turn if able if paid the right mana, and when it dies, target creature and opponent's control. Yeah, control. Get negative three, negative three until end of turn. Yeah. Nothing too special. Nylia's Presence. Enchanted every basic land type in addition to its other types. Decent for mana pool. I had this at one point, but don't need it anymore. You know? The upgrade. Fleet Feather Sandals. A quick creature has flying and haste. I guess it's a good way to throw four mana away. Vaporkin. Flying and can block only creatures with flying. Okay, whatever. It's a common. What do you expect? Felhide Minotaur. Nothing special. Just a 2-3. Ashfidel. Wanderer. Ashfidel. Oh, that's where I heard it from. The Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. Or is what many people call Gary. Yeah, I thought my friend was just making that as a joke, and then I found out everybody called him Gary, so maybe that's just a location in Theros. Can't really say much about him, just a regenerator. Voyaging Satyr. Uh, tap to untap target land. There is a deck that I'm thinking of right now that I could see this in, but I'd rather have that Simic that says tap to untap another target permanent, which has more options to it. It has the same mana cost too, and it's a 2-2. Two -two. I could consider it, but no. Titan Strength. Yeah, I've seen this card before. It's a scry. Get 3-1 until in a turn. Yeah. Baleful Eidolon, or Eidolon, or Eidolon. I pronounce it Eidolon, and you know why? Final Fantasy XIII. So, this is a Death Touch for Bestow. It's an enchantment creature. It's a 1-1, one, one, but it's Death Touch. And if you would bestow it onto something, that can make it deadly. Tormented Hero. 
This card is very familiar to me because one of my friends, and I'm pretty sure he's watching right now, yes, I'm talking to you, Kyle, has this card, and a lot of them in his mono black deck. He uses it for devotion so he can get a bunch of harpies. Yay, harpies. But it enters the battlefield tapped. And, yeah. And whenever you cast a tear, each opponent loses one life and gain life equal to the amount of life lost this way. Well, that's not bad, but it doesn't have lifelink, so... I, I prefer Servant of Timurit, which is the which is pretty much the same thing, except it's inspired. Anyway, let it pass. Seder Piper. Target creature must be blocked this turn of Fable. No thank you. Decorated Griffin. Fine, friend, one damage that would be dealt to you this turn. I'm just going to slowly reveal the next card. This. The Prophet of Krufix. Untap all creatures and lands you control during each other player's untap step. You may cast creature cards as though they had Flash. That's huge. That is going in my Simic deck. And in addition, I also got another Harpy token and planes. We've got one more Born of Gods booster pack and two more Journey, Nyx, Journey into Nyx booster packs to open. I actually think it's the first time I've noticed that. Journey into Nyx, not Journey to Nyx. Into Nyx. And while we're on Journey to Nyx right now, um, when I went and bought these booster packs, the guy who was selling them to me told me that there's such thing as a God pack. And for those who have never heard, a god pack is a booster pack that has all 15 gods in it. And I just watched on um, YouTube a French guy opening up a god pack. And I don't speak French, but the excitement in his voice, yeah, I must be very excited to open one of those. I mean, it's exciting enough to just get one god. I mean, I remember how excited I was when I pulled out Aroas, God of Victory. Anyway, so, not that it's ever going to happen. Getting one god is exciting enough, but getting 15, oh my. God. It's the best kind of booster pack you can open. So anyway, we're going to do uh, Born of Gods, and it's represented by the blue-white god that I can't think of the name of. Um, yeah, so let's just open it up. Oh, now, I have no interest in, in um, blue-white or green-red, so if I happen to get a blue-white or green-red god, I'll probably just put it up for trade. And I almost didn't buy Born of Gods booster packs because I don't really think I need any cards in them. But anyway, let's get on with it. We're almost done. Three more booster packs. Let's start off with Sphinx's Disciple. Inspire whenever it becomes untapped, draw a card. I have one, don't need it, you know. Bar's Radiance. This was a card that I was thinking about putting in my life gain. You tap it and pay two and gain three life. And with Sanguine Bond, that means somebody else loses three life. Decent card. I'm considering it. Next card, we've got Satasin Starbreaker. Enters the battlefield, you may destroy target Ura. Ooh, an enchantment destroyer. I wonder if you've bestowed a enchantment creature, if that counts for this to destroy. I don't know. A judge would know that. I'm no judge, so if there are any judges watching this video, let me know. Satasin Starbreaker was the name of the card. And it says, when it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target aura. Forsaken Drifters. When it dies, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Okay, I think I can see where they're going with this one. Probably Golgari. Good. Because if you've got a deck that benefits from cards in the graveyard, which is um, Scavenge, you exile a card from your graveyard to put number of counters on a live creature. I can see why that would be there. But, again, don't have that kind of card, so that's alright. Exoriate. Exile target tapped creature. Very situational. Don't need it. Scouring Sands. Deals one damage to each creature your opponents control and scry one. Okay. I can see where I could use this in my mono red deck. I have a card called the Pyromancer Gauntlets, which pretty much increases the, the damage done by 
sorcery and instant spells by two. So if I were to have that on the field, it's an artifact. And if I were to cast Scurring Stance, it would deal three damage, not one. So I'm considering that, but I think I need more Pyromancer Gauntlets. And I'm not going to put it in because I need more Pyromancer Gauntlets on one of my decks, so it might not work yet. Necrobite. Target creature gains Death Touch until end of turn and regenerate it. Haven't found a good situation to use this for. Okay, that's good. Uh, Kragma Butcher. When it becomes untapped, it gets 2 0 until end of turn. Decent. Anybody making a Minotaur deck, this could be good. I personally am not, but I'm thinking about it. I have a couple of decent Minotaur cards. Loyal Pegasus. Can attack or block alone. And it's Blight. Nothing too special. Uh, nope, still common. And we've got Elite Skirmisher. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it, you may tap target creature. And with that being said, we are now moving on from common to uncommon. The Architect of Imagination. I was thinking about finding this card for some purpose. What was it? It may have been the multicolor deck. I was thinking about having a multicolor deck that has all four, five architects. This one's the Flight Stealer, is what I call it. The Stealer cards. So that's decent. And I'm thinking about putting it in my Simic deck. Am I hearing the U.S. National Anthem? Oh, the hockey game must be on. Yeah, yeah let me just pop it in there, because I think I'm confused. Acrona Script Inscript Conscriptor. Yeah, I think I know what this is. Gain control of another target creature until in a turn on top of a creature against haste and plunge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Searing Blood. I think I am going to put this in my mono red deck. Deals 2 damage to target creature, and when that creature dies this turn, it deals 3 damage to the creature's controller. So it's good. It's good. Put it in mono um, red. Damn it. Um, Fate Unraveler. Fate Unraveler. Toil. I'm thinking toil, or anything that forces an opponent to draw a card. But I don't think I can use this card. Let it pass. And then in addition, I got a Swamp and a Zombie Token. Sending reinforcements for Timurit the Murder King. And now, this is my grand finale, Journey to Nyx. And we're going to start with the Gorgon God. Green, black. Can't think of the name right now. Journey to Nyx is pretty brand spanking new, so uh, forgive me if I don't know all the gods off by heart. Anyway, let's open up one. I hope for a god pack. No, that's okay. I do not expect a god pack, okay? I didn't even find out about god packs until today when I bought these booster packs. Nature's Panopoly? Panoply? Oh wait, I know this card. Yeah, I've seen this card before. I would recommend um, that other one that doubles the counters. I would recommend that card more. So, it's nothing for this. Nyx Infusion. Target creature gets 2-2 two, two, as long as it's an enchantment. Otherwise, negative 2, negative 2. Eh, nope. God Hunter o Octopus. The fuck is that? God Hunter Octopus can't attack unless defending player controls an enchantment or an enchanted permanent. No. Sigiled Skink. Oh yeah, I know this card. Do not need it. Pass it. Font of Vigor. Oh, this is the, the white font card. I think I have one of these, actually. And it is... Um, when you sacrifice it, you gain 7 life. This could be good in my life gain card, actually. If I don't know how to spend my mana, I'm going to have to pull out the other one. Put it on the side. Oresco's Swift Claw. After the Battle of Faragax Bridge, the champion spent many months among the Lignon of Oresco's. She found that they were quick to take offense, but not because they were thin skinned, but because they were always eager for a fight. The Thariad. Who's the Thariad? Doesn't matter. Let it pass. Warwing Siren. 
Flying and a heroic for whenever you cast a spell that targets it, put a 1 1 counter on it. Yeah, that's what most heroics are, I find. Now, what the fuck is this ravenous loop crocata? That's what always comes to my mind when I look at this card, is what the fuck is this thing? I don't know, but I don't need it. It's just a vigilance, make it monstrous, and nothing really happens because it's monstrous. Yeah. Flame Speaker's Will. Whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it, and if you do, destroy target artifact. No. Aspect of Gorgon. Enchant creature has 1 3 and has death touch. Yeah, pretty basic. I'm a little disappointed at the cards that I'm finding. Ooh, there's a pretty card. Fleet Feather Cockatrice. Flash, Flying, and Death Touch. And it's got a Monstrosity 3. You know, that's actually a pretty decent... That's a pretty... Pretty card. Pretty decent. Nah. But I like the artwork of it. I will say that. Flying, Death Touch, and you can flash it. Flash, Death Touch could be useful. I'm going to put think about putting that in my Simic deck. Could replace my Horizon Chimera. Spite of Mogus. I have a shiny of this in my mono red deck, and I would love to have another one. Bellhide Petrifier. Other Minotaur creatures you control have Death Touch. This is another one of those cards that have good synergy with Minotaurs. Black and red, I think, are Minotaurs. I need to start thinking about making a Minotaur deck. But... No, not right now. Fair's Band War Chief. I think this is like the third one I've had. And it gives other centaur creature tokens you control 1-1 one, one Vigilance and Trample. I have a lot of these right now, actually. I'm surprised that I found another one. Swamp and an ad. Alright. Okay. One last card. One last booster pack. Represented by probably one of my favorite planeswalkers in all of Magic the Gathering. A Johnny. Okay, no god pack. Returned Reveler. When it dies, each player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Good for nil, but or mill. Mill. Good for Mill. But I don't need Theros cards for Mill. Let it pass. Crufix in Crufix's Insight. Reveal the top six cards of your library. Put up to three enchantment cards from among them into your hand and the rest of the revealed cards into your graveyard. What if I don't want to reveal? I'm going to pass. Ajani's Present. 1-1 one, one indestructible until end of turn. That's okay for creatures. I do not know if I put them in my soldier deck. I don't think so. So I'll pass. Nature's Panoply. We already discussed that. Not that great. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, a Constellator. It's a Constellation. That, that means whenever this creature or another enchantment enters the battlefield, this happens. For this one, each opponent loses one life. Oh, if you gain that life, then I would put that in my black-white deck, but no, you don't. Okay. Cruel Feeding. Any number of target creatures each gain 1-0 oh, and gain life link until end turn. Nothing special. Prevent all combat damage of... It's starting, to, it's starting to smell like trading cards in here. I wonder why. Maybe it's because I opened up 10 booster packs so far. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Stonewise Fortifier by target creature this turn. Well, there's a pretty card. Rise of Eagles. Put two, 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 blue bird enchantment creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield and scry one. An offering to the sea brings some insight from the stars. No, thank you. Bears Band Thunderhoof. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it, put two 1 1 counters on it. 
decent in an enchantment deck, but I don't think I need him. Nah. Never was a big fan of heroic. Blade Tusk Boar. Intimidate. Did I put this in my mono colored? I don't think I did. I'll give it a chance. Alright, now we're going to move on to the last set of uncommons, starting with Rollick of Abandon. All creatures get plus two, negative two until end of turn. No. Knowledge and power. Because apparently knowledge isn't power, so let's have knowledge and power. But if knowledge is power, then knowledge and power would be knowledge and knowledge, or power and power. Anyway, this one is whenever you scry, you may play pay two mana, and if you do, it deals two damage to target creature or player whenever you scry. And I do have quite a few scry cards in that mono red deck, and I might need to put in more. Scry burn. Maybe I should turn that into it. Pull from the deep. Return up to one target instant card and one target sorcery card up to one target from your graveyard into your hand and exile pull from the deep. I can see why. Holy fucking shit. This, my friends, is the most expensive card in Journey into Nyx. And I am holding it right here in my hand right now. This is the white black god named... What's his name again? Anthros. Anth Anthrios? Anthrios, the god of passage. Awesome. I'm sweating right now, by the way. Anthrios, Anthrios, God of Passage, indestructible. As long as your devotion to white and black is less than seven, Anthrios is not a creature. Whenever another creature you own dies, return it to your hand unless target opponent pays three life. Yeah, that's fucking going in my white-black deck. Are you insane? And in other news, I got a mountain and a sphinx. Okay. For a while, I thought my best find was going to be the Overgrown Tomb, which is going to be a trade card, but hands down, it goes to Othreos by a mile. Most expensive card in Journey to Nyx, which means that I have the most expensive card in Dragon Maze, which is Voice of Resurgence. I have the most expensive card in Theros, which is Elspeth, I think. I'll double check. Most expensive card in Born of Gods, which is... I believe it's Bremaz, King of Roscos. And most expensive card right here. I'm excited and... Oh, I'm sweating a little bit. That is awesome. There is one little problem. I don't have a lot of creatures in that deck. Hmm. Might have to change that. But either way, why would you not want to put a god in one of your decks? Even if it doesn't do synergy with it, it's a fucking god. This is awesome. This is awesome. And this, by the way, is my second god that I have. First being um, Aroas, god of victory. The white-red god. And my friend opened up Krufix, the blue-green god, in front of me. Which is okay. And... I bought one of my f other friends a booster pack, or an intro pack, Theros, for Christmas, and she opened up Heliod in front of me. I was jealous because I hadn't had a god then. So, awesomeness. Um, Kyle, I apologize for your jealousy if you're watching this, but he's mine. Anyway, that's all the booster packs that I have for today, so um, got some very good cards. Uh, leave your comments down below, uh, opinions about some of the cards that I've opened, maybe some insight on some of the cards that I have opened that I didn't care about, that maybe you can relate to me as to what kind of deck I could use them in, and yeah, share your opinions. Journey to Nyx is out. What did you get? Did you get any good cards lately? I'm looking forward through Journey to Nyx all the way to the M15 bridge, so thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.